Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another tutorial in 3D Studio Max. This time, we're going to be taking a look at how to make this computer chip circuit board looking thing here. I actually created this as a CG element for a friend of mine's movie he's been working on. And uh, it should actually come out any day now. Any day now. Hmm. You can check out a teaser trailer for it if you're interested. I'll link to it in the description of this video. Looks pretty good. I think it's a movie about a boy that befriends an alien. The alien's trying to find his way home, and uh, apparently the alien doesn't get cell reception on Earth, so he can't phone home. Something like that, I could be wrong. But now, let's get down to business and create some splines. Now, drawing with splines can be a little confusing at first, because it's not quite like using edible poly. But not to worry, after this tutorial, you'll be a spline creating pro, or your money back guaranteed. Except for the fact that this tutorial is free, so... Yeah. Well, anyway, let's go to the Create tab and make sure we're in Shapes. And that's where we're going to find all of our spline objects. In here, there's going to be two main ways that you're going to create splines. One way is just picking a shape and uh, dragging it out. And the other way is using the line tool, which acts kind of like the pen tool in Photoshop, but much, much worse. So you can either click points and they'll be connected by lines, or you can click, hold in the mouse button and drag, and it'll create a rounded corner. So you can have fun with that. And if you click onto the first point that you made, it'll ask if you want to close the spline, and you can hit yes, and it'll make it a full shape, or, you can actually just have an open spline like that. And all I did was right click to stop creating the spline. All right, let's create some circuitry. If you do an image search, you can find a lot of cool looking circuit board graphics. Um, that one's pretty neat. And what I did is I just found a royalty free stock image of circuits that look something like this and I modified it a bit, but I'm just gonna use that as our template. So, let's minimize that and draw ourselves out a plane. So let's make this like 70 and make this at like 125. That is not 70. So we'll just right click on all those and center those right up to zero. And once that's centered up, we'll just go and grab our circuit template and drop it right on top of our plane. Nowhere else, just right on top. And I'm going to rotate rotate this 90 degrees so that it is vertical. All right, so that takes care of the hard part. Next up is the really hard part. So let's zoom in here and start by tracing one of these shorter circuits. This one looks good. All right, we're gonna make sure we are in our Create tab and go back to Shapes. And we're gonna start by using the rectangle shape. So I'm gonna zoom in here, start with this larger box, and I'm just gonna draw from the top corner down all the way to the bottom, and that's our first rectangle. Next, I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm going to draw a box around it again. And I'm actually gonna overlap this rectangle with the first one, and you'll see why that is in a second. So let's move down here, and again, I'm gonna overlap and drag it all the way down. So before we can modify these, I'm gonna to need to select one of them and, huh, let's right click on our, let's select our background, right click on it, and go to its object properties real quick. And I'm just gonna freeze it and Uncheck show frozen in gray that way we won't be able to accidentally move this around while we're working So back to our rectangles. I'm going to select our first rectangle and then right click on it select convert to Edible spline and that's just gonna bump us over to the modify tab and give us a couple different options that we can mess around with and now that this is an edible spline we can scroll down and find attach when we click on attach we will be able to mouse over and it'll give us this crosshair when we mouse over the other rectangles. If we click on them, it will combine all three of them to be one solid piece. But you can see we still have these weird overlapping parts here. So we'll take care of that 
right now. So I'm going to scroll farther down the list here until we find Boolean. As you can see, it's grayed out and we can't really do anything with the settings here. And that's because we first need to go to our spline selection mode and select one of the whole boxes. We only need one of them to start. So we can scroll back down. You can see our Boolean option is now selectable. And Boolean has a couple different methods that you can pick from here, union, subtraction, and intersection. We're gonna be using union right now. But if you wanna play around with these other settings, you can go right ahead. Just don't come crying to me if you mess something up and then can't finish the tutorial. I, I tried to warn you. So with union selected and our first box selected, we're gonna click on Boolean. And then if we mouse over our second rectangle, it's gonna give us another crosshair. And if we click on it, whoa, they weren't kidding. Huh. <clears throat> it gets rid of that weird intersecting part and just uses the outline from both objects. So with Boolean still selected, we can now mouse over and click on our third rectangle. And what do you know? The same thing happens. So that is the Boolean method for working with splines. Let's move along and see what else we can get in trouble with. So let's uncheck Boolean and scroll back up to the top so we can test out our next method. All right, for Boolean, we needed to be in the spline select mode. Now for the next method, I think we can be in either segment or vertex mode. Let's just be in vertex mode because I'm sure that works. And we'll scroll down here a little bit until we find the refine button. And if we click on the refine button, when we mouse over part of our box, you'll see we'll get another crosshair and a different looking symbol. And what refine allows you to do is if you click anywhere on a selected spline, it'll add another vertex point. So I'm going to put one there and two in the middle here. And then I'm going to right click to unselect refine, make sure we're still in vertex mode. And I'm going to grab these two and drag them down. So that just added four more points that we could use to get more control and detail for tracing our circuit board. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this down a bit, move that up. Now you can see that one thing that happened is we don't have straight lines anymore. We have curves and we don't want that for this particular instance. So we can just highlight both of these, right click and change it to corner. And that'll just fix that right up by making them right angles. And then these look like they have the same problem where they're curved. So select both of them, right click and change them from Bezier corner to corner and that fixes that right up. So those are the main two methods I used the first time I created the circuit board. So let's jump ahead a bit and move down to this circular part. So for this circular part, just gonna get out of vertex mode so we're not in edible spline mode for our rectangle anymore, and go back to the Create tab. And to create this circle, I used a circle because that just seemed like the best idea at the time. I'm gonna get as close as I can to what I think is the center and click and drag out a circle. And it's a little off, so we can just move that kind of down into place. And that'll be our outer circle. Now, I could just hold down Shift on the keyboard and drag in and create an inner circle, but then our two circles will be separate objects. So instead of wasting time converting to an Evel spline and then attaching the circles together, I'm just going to get rid of that one right click, convert the outer circle to an edible spline, go to our spline select mode, and with every edge selected, now I'll hold down shift on the keyboard and scale it down. That way, they're already connected to each other as one solid piece. So now let's work on bridging the gap between our rectangles and our circle. So I'm gonna go back in the create tab and we'll use the other method for creating splines and that is the line tool. So I'm just gonna zoom up here and I'm gonna get close to the corner here, click once and then drag it down to the next corner. Click once again, drag it down to the next corner and I'm just clicking once and then using my middle mouse button to scroll around the scene. And I'm just gonna go down here and click again. And then to stop creating my spline, I'm going to right click which will let us start over with another line. So just click, move around, move up to the next corner, click, next corner, click, and we're done. Right click to end our spline. 
Now since our first rectangle here is already an edible spline, we can select it, go back to the Modify tab. And if we scroll down, we'll once again attach both of our lines. And while we're at it, we'll attach their circles too. So now that we've attached everything together, they're all considered one solid spline. But since these corners here and our circle aren't technically connected, it'll cause some problems if we try to extrude it. It just kind of pulled them up. They're not solid like our circle and our first box. So to fix that, back in our top view, we're gonna move up to the top and we're gonna weld these vertices together. But to do that, we have to make sure that the vertices are free and not connected by a line. So we're gonna go into our line mode, select this one here and delete it. Now if we go to vertex mode, we can select these two vertices here at the same time. And since they're already so close together, we can just hit weld. And they'll jump together and become ones. And we can select the other two and do the same thing. Now it seems like when we welded them together, they stopped being corners. So we'll just select each of these and change them back to corners. All right, the last thing we have to connect is our circles to the rest of the spline. And the way we're gonna do that is a combination of a couple of the other ways we use. So we're just going to move these vertices back a bit so we can see the circle. Scroll down till we find refine. We're gonna put a couple of vertexes there in line with the other ones so that we can weld them. So right click to get off of refine. Go back up to the top to segment, select this middle segment here and delete it. Oh, we gotta go back to vertex mode first. And we're gonna move these vertices back in line with our newly created ones and select. Select them all and scroll down until we find weld. And that's it, they're both connected. Everything has been joined together and as long as we didn't miss anything, we should be able to go and extrude these and it'll look perfect. We could also use our bevel, our bevel modifier if we wanted to. Oops. And I'll work the same way as extrude, except it will give us a bevel option like that. Let's give it a nice beveled corner. And of course our spline is renderable now. And the other thing you can do with this now that you've created a spline is, let's get rid of bevel, go back to our edible spline, and if you go all the way to the top, there's a rendering tab that we can maximize and just check enable and render and enable and viewport. So right now it's set the radial, it's a little too thick. We can drop it down and make something like that pretty techy looking. So I just warped ahead through time a bit here and finished tracing all the rest of the circuitry. And I can do that because in my tutorials, I'm the master of all space, space and time. time. <coughs> oh man, sorry about that. I had a bit of temporal phlegm stuck in my throat. <coughs> but that's besides the point. This is what it looks like here. It's pretty cool. There's a little space in here that you can put a logo or a design. Like I showed you in that earlier animation, it renders out pretty neat. And that's it for this spline filled tutorial. If you wanna know more about working with splines, I have two other tutorials for you to check out. One is for lofting with splines and the other one is lathing splines. Both of those are pretty cool. No, I'm lying. The first one's actually really boring, but yet very informative. But on top of that, you can go over to our YouTube channel and check out all of our other pro tutorials. And you know, uh, let's wrap. Until next time.